confined space entry safety training. Welcome to this session on confined space safety. By the end of this video, you will be able to describe what a confined space is, the hazards associated with confined spaces and their control measures, pre-entry and entry procedures, emergency evacuation procedures. Now, Let's dive into the details and ensure we have a clear understanding of this critical safety topic. What is a confined space? Imagine working in a space that is enclosed or partially enclosed, not designed for human occupancy and with limited entry or exit points. This is what we refer to as a confined space. These spaces pose unique risks especially when atmospheric hazards are present. Examples of confined spaces Think about vessels, ducts, tanks, or pipes. Other examples include sludge pits, utility vaults, trenches, collection basins, and even boiler and tube areas. These are all environments where confined space safety becomes crucial. Hazards associated with confined spaces Working in confined spaces can be dangerous due to various hazards. Let's break them down. Toxic or flammable gases or fumes. These gases and vapors can often be invisible and odorless, making them particularly hazardous. Examples include Oxygen deficiency. This occurs when oxygen levels drop below 19.5% creating an asphyxiant hazard. Hydrogen sulfide, H2S heavier than air, it has a characteristic rotten egg smell at low concentrations but no odor at higher levels. It's both flammable and highly toxic. Carbon monoxide, co with a density similar to air, this odorless gas is flammable and poses asphyxiation risks. Methane, CH4 lighter than air, and highly flammable, it's another common hazard in confined spaces. Other hazards Excessive heat can lead to heat stress or exhaustion. Poor air quality due to contaminants. Restricted emergency evacuation routes. Contaminated water, especially sewage. Slip and trip hazards from uneven surfaces or debris. Confined space entry steps. To safely enter a confined space, follow these steps. Survey the workplace, identify confined spaces in your area. Determine permit type, assess whether the space requires a permit for entry. Isolation, isolate the space from unauthorized access and other hazards. Follow the written plan, perform all activities in accordance with a documented plan. Confined Space Team Roles Working in confined spaces requires a coordinated team effort. Here's who does what. Attendance Always remain outside the confined space during operations. Keep an accurate count of all persons inside. Identify hazards and monitor conditions. Prevent unauthorized entry and maintain continuous communication with entrants. Evacuate personnel when necessary and contact rescue personnel if required. Entrance Enter the confined space and complete their assigned tasks. Sign in and out on the log sheet. Understand the hazards and the entry permit requirements. Stay in contact with the attendant and exit immediately if conditions change. Supervisors Authorize the entry and verify the permit is complete. Ensure testing and safety procedures are followed. Confirm the readiness of the team and equipment. Terminate the entry permit when work is complete or issues arise. Rescue team Be familiar with the confined space and its potential rescue challenges. Train in first aid, CPR and rescue procedures. Regularly practice rescue scenarios. Confined space entry requirements. Atmospheric testing. 
Before entering a confined space, it's crucial to test the atmosphere to ensure it's safe. Testing involves Oxygen levels, these should be between 19.5% and 23.5%. Combustible gases and vapors, these must not exceed 10% of the lower explosive limit, LEL. Toxic gases, for example, hydrogen sulfide levels must not exceed 10 ppm and carbon monoxide levels must stay below 35 ppm over an 8-hour period. Key Atmospheric Testing Practices Always test at different levels of the space, top, middle, and bottom. Ensure analyzers are calibrated every 6 months. If limits are exceeded, Immediately evacuate the space. Re-entry is only allowed once conditions are deemed safe. Electrical Equipment When it comes to electrical equipment, in gas-free spaces, standard low-voltage lighting is sufficient. In spaces with gas or flammable residues, use flame-proof or explosion-proof equipment. Always protect and de-energize underground utilities and implement a lockout tagout system. Ventilation Ventilation is critical for maintaining a safe atmosphere inside the confined space. Use blowers and fans that are appropriately sized. Explosion proof Properly positioned to ensure effective airflow. Respiratory protection When respiratory protection is required, Choose the right type based on the hazard. Air purifying devices, use filters or cartridges to remove contaminants from the air. Supplied air devices, provide air from an external source. Self-contained breathing devices, use a blower to force air through purifying elements. Trainings All employees working in confined spaces must undergo training that covers. Hazards and their controls. Permit to work, PTW, systems. Gas testing and equipment use. Personal protective equipment, PP. Emergency plans and rescue procedures. Emergency procedure and rescue plan. In the event of an emergency, every entry must have a task specific rescue plan and a standby rescue team. Anyone detecting a hazard must raise the alarm immediately. Evacuate the space when an emergency siren sounds. Only trained rescuers should attempt rescue operations. Work cannot resume until all safety checks and authorizations are completed. Let's summarize what we've learned. Working in confined spaces requires meticulous planning, awareness, and adherence to safety protocols. Always follow atmospheric testing procedures, use the proper equipment, and ensure your team is trained and prepared. Safety is everyone's responsibility, never compromise on it. Safety in confined spaces isn't just a rule, it's a lifesaver. This is all about today's topic. Thanks for watching Funny EHS Info. And don't forget to subscribe our channel to get immediate notification of our videos. Share our videos to your friends and colleagues to create safety awareness. If you have any questions and requirements please comment in comment box.